Oh my god, we're back. Yeah, welcome to Grumpy McNo Topics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems to be a recurring theme, but actually there is some very heavy D&D news, or I guess tabletop role-playing news that we'll get into here in a moment. I've seen a number of things the, the yeah. past couple of days. There, there's, and I, don't, I haven't seen any real D&D news. Uh, there's no D&D news. There is something that is a heartbreaking thing that, uh, that we'll discuss here in a moment. But first, introductions. Five point five is not coming out. Uh, no, no, that's not. Oh. <laughs> that wouldn't that that wouldn't actually be heartbreaking. But uh, so I'm the Grumpy Dungeon Master Jay. Uh, my co-host is Grumpy Dungeon Master Christopher. We are the Grumpy Dungeon Masters. In- Yay. Uh, introduction over. Yep. Introductions over. How's Thank how's Cla- how's Claude working out? By the way, Claude is great. Um, so the funny part is, is that I uh. I've been, I've been talking a lot about our Discord and, and posting stuff on our Discord and mentioning it on the podcast. Say, hey, you should go look at our Discord. We got stuff there. And I had thought when I'd set up the uh, the uh, auto exporter from our podcast to our YouTube channel and other places that um, the uh, the links are going out with it, the social links, like our link tree and our Facebook right, yeah, link and stuff. Yeah. yeah, that wasn't happening. So, oh. yeah. So when we had like a hundred views on our podcast on YouTube last week, none of those people had any kind of links to get to oh, our Discord. No. Oh fuck! <laughs> so, so yeah, professional podcast. Uh, eh. Not really professional. It's a podcast. Anyways, yeah, it's I did. I made sure the links are there now, so they're there currently. Okay. So hopefully, hopefully they stay there and work properly going forward. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. I mean, if you want to go back and look at our podcast chat where we kind of put a lot of topics and links and whatnot, it's all there. Claude's there. Claude's great. He made a gay bar. He made me a sword. You know. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. I, I I love the idea of Claude. You know, just ask ask Claude the Tiefling anything in our Discord. Yeah. And uh, I, one, of, one of my Adventure League players, he's posting funny memes about snakes playing D&D, which is odd, but it's there as well. I mean, I guess if it's entertaining. <laughs> um, so anyway, you, you, before I interrupted you about Claude, you said there was something going on. There is something that has shaken uh, the tabletop role-playing landscape that has changed the face of a well-loved, well-known live play uh, tabletop RPG game. I think uh, your I think your topic is probably very on point with what my topic was. So keep going. It is with a sorrowful heart and regret in my soul to say that fresh cut grass is dead. Yeah, of which I had never heard of fresh cut grass until <laughs> today. Literally. <laughs> so um, I, I I don't watch Critical Role, and it's not because it's a bad show or anything like that. It's just that like, I don't want to take any Matt Mercerisms into my style of play. I love everything that he does. I've seen his work. It's great. I can't live up to the expectation of 17 professional actors or whatever right. on a show doing that kind of thing. And more power to them. They're fantastic. I know fresh cut, fresh cut grass only because of the, the meme uh, about how he was named was funny, and how, how was he named? Because I literally know nothing about the current campaign. So, the, the if if you can remember, if not, then we'll we'll Google it and we'll work so, our way uh, through it. <laughs> no, so basically, Fresh Cut Grass uh, was originally named uh, Faithful Caregiver, um, but I guess the, cre- the 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 joke was is that, and in fact, the creator um named their creations over their favorite smells oh, so okay. fresh cut grass was one of them so was wet kitty <laughs> and that was a joke and that's how his name be- got, got to be and there was a there was a reference to him in the D movie uh with uh simon casting um fresh fresh cut grass. and yeah, making yeah. fresh cut grass so that was the wink and nod towards that and of all the critical role stuff that's come through my local gaming store, there are multiple plushies of fresh cut grass that get cycled through all the time. They have bought and had to rebuy and buy, buy more fresh cut grass plushies because people buy them all the time. He's a very popular character. 
Um, I believe he has some interesting mechanics where, like, he has, uh, like, ins- he has health, but, like, instead of he's one a, thing he's he a has... War, he's a Warforged, isn't he? Not really. It's, 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 it's Mercer's own creation. Okay, okay really. he, he's a ro- he's a construct. Yeah, he has he, health, he has health, health points, but he also has stress points. Yeah, but um, that's, that's a, um, like, that's Dagger Heart. That's, yeah. Yeah, so I, they kind of moved over to that. Yeah, we're going to talk a, a bit about that today as well. And uh, like he has a berserk mode and the stress gets too high, which is just killing everybody. He's got a buzzsaw blade for a hand. And I guess uh, in the, the campaign last Thursday, um, he cast uh, a spell, one of his, like a cleric spell on himself uh, to explode his core. And in doing so, uh, it basically exploded him and killed the end boss that they've been fighting for like a year or two or for the season or whatever. Um, and they, they took him out for that. And it seems to be like a recurring thing. Like I haven't watched much of the show. Um, but I think Sam Regal is the one that seems to always pop up as someone that made a character that everybody loves <laughs> that dies horribly. <laughs> so <laughs> it may just be a him thing, but it seems to be a recurring yeah. him thing. Uh, yeah, so so let's talk a little bit about it. Uh, I'm, I know you probably have seen the uh, uh, recent video that, uh, uh, not Bob the Builder, but fuck, what's his name? Uh, Dungeon Craft, or, the you know, the guy that I'm talking about, the one who yeah. always watches damn YouTube videos, whose name I'm completely freaking blanking on right now. Oh, Professor Dungeon know. Master, that's there it, you. yes. There we go. I knew you uh, could get it eventually. Uh, I've I've got too many videos I watch. I, I was watching Bob the World Builder earlier, which is why I couldn't think of the Professor Dungeon Master one. Uh, mm-hmm. that, and I'm, that and I'm old. I mean, you uh, forgot about the Beavis and Butthead video you posted to us like, oh, four times. No, that's because I shared that with like 30 <laughs> people. <laughs> I can't remember who all I sent that one to. That was kind of funny. Oh no, it was so good. It's so good. I don't I think it is funny that I shared it with the group twice, but honestly, it's it's appropriate. <laughs> I'm playing this campaign, guys. It's called Dragon Heights. I've never played it before. Yeah, I haven't ever played it before. Uh so anyway, what he he was talking specifically about character retirement. And mm-hmm. with my with the current campaign I am playing in, I actually built in a way to retire the character. Because yeah. the the idea is that you know if you play a character up to level twenty or whatever, you, you're so damn powerful. It sort of kind of takes away from it. Like it, as a real human being or a real person, you should have some. You should have goals to obtain, and usually when you obtain those goals, you sort of move on. Yeah. So at, if you are a professional adventurer, whether it be through accident or on purpose you should finally reach a point of either enough wealth, enough power, uh, you completed your task, whatever it be, and potentially have a reason to get out of the adventuring life because adventuring is dangerous. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's um, uh, Durin in the Yawning Portals. My go-to example for that being that he's a retired adventurer that made enough money going down into the dungeon of the Mad Mage that he basically just bought the Yarning Portal and bought yep. the, the entrance to it. Yeah, oh god, I, I can't tell you how many bartenders I have used over the years or run into that were retired adventurers. Oh, yeah. that was the that was the freaking uh that was the, the like the final episode of Quantum Leap, the bartender was was God essentially. Oh okay. I never saw it's, that. It, really? <laughs> I've the last seen... episode of Quantum Leap where basically he's like he's leaping around and leaping around and leaping around and basically he he ends up at the same bar like he started in and he's talking to the bartender and he's like well maybe your whole purpose is just to leap around and you know fix people's problems and you know it's not actually a curse it's actually a great thing maybe it's intended and then like the bartender leaps away and and it was implied that it was basically either like God himself was a creator or was another leaper basically from the future or something like that, that was uh, inferring into them that they were in fact, you know, doing the right thing their entire lives. Yeah. So it sounds like his purpose was to just leap around. It wasn't. And then he was a monkey. Uh Wasn't ever to get home. I did see the monkey episode. Everyone saw the monkey episode. Yeah. 
Unless but, you're a youngin, then yeah, go watch well, Quantum Leap. Well, there apparently there's a new Quantum Leap show that I think might have just got canceled. Uh, after I think that happened in like seasons. early 2000s. Uh, no, like very recently. Uh, let's see. Quantum Leap 2023? Yeah, yeah. It's 2022 to 2024. It takes place 30 years after the other one. Oh. Uh, well, I, 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 anyway. Yeah, no new can- ideas can- in Hollywood. It got canceled after two seasons. Big surprise. So, but it, I like the idea of... Uh, when you make a character of writing in a way to retire the character Mm -hmm. Uh, with the character I'm playing right now, there is a potential way for that character to retire with, and then I'd have to make a brand new character. Uh, Obviously I'm not going to say anything about how that would happen, but you know, I think just going forward, any characters I make are going to have that somehow tied in. Yeah. I mean, I honestly don't have haven't actually did a character with an end goal in mind. I've never mm-hmm. never written a character that way because maybe I don't expect them to live that long, or I don't expect the campaign to get to that kind of. Sure, yeah, point. and that's always a, that's always a real possibility because most campaigns um, end like three sessions in. But I mean, the few times that that people have retired characters was either because the character didn't fit a campaign style I was running, the player couldn't make it anymore. That's, um, yeah, that's normal. <laughs> uh, I would say for my personal characters, I have a very small list of them, and I've, I've actually never thought about. It. I guess the only one I've ever thought about it would be my LARP character, just because at our LARP retirement, the their four hundred one k system is a built in mechanic to the game because yeah. you know getting too big and too powerful in the game is kind of a problem that few people have the privilege of having. And the, it, but when it we get a, there, it's it, a little different, however, yeah. simply because to get very powerful in that game, you literally have to play for 15 plus years. Yeah. Like it's, it's not like a D and D game where within, within two years, you're, you're damn near godhood. Right. It's yeah, it is, it is a little different, um, but at least they have that system in there and, and sure. it, yeah. it's a worked thing and people have, done it you know so i don't know so 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 is it coming up in your campaign oh no no or something no 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 no. like we just started this campaign i've we played two game sessions but uh drew uh is the guy running it and he, he initially had said the plan is to run this thing up to possibly 20th level so, you know, and we've done that multiple times. Like I ran one campaign that went up to, tw- actually, I ran one campaign up to 20th level. Another one, I think we got to 12th before I ended it, uh, actually had an ending for it. And then I played in another one where we got up to 30th level, uh, all, all since 5e started. So yeah. with, with our play group, it's not uncommon to actually play a full campaign. I mean, how long does that take you? Uh... So my first campaign probably took three years uh, from level one to level 20. Uh, it was sort of hit or miss on the play times. You know. Yeah. Uh, the game that we played in first to 30th level, that was probably three to four years. And right, then I my, just my, can't yeah. like envision, you know, ever playing a game for that long and going to 30th level like that's i know i know you, you're custom making rules at that point in time and, and there well, are some rules in the dmg that uh, you know kind of let that happen but like uh, we 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 just use the uh dm's guild uh i don't remember i guess it's called epic handbook or something like that there were a yeah. couple of them we just utilized one of them and it it worked great there wasn't any issues with it that's good I just, it's just been like, I, I, I've run my stuff for like a year or year and a half, but the story's over by that time, you know, the characters retire. There's, I always have an end goal as a DM, you know, and I let the players kind of figure out like what happens to their characters afterwards. But yeah, I've never thought about how my characters would ever go. I mean, my second game camp- just lasts that long. The, the second campaign that I wrapped up at twelfth level was supposed to go to twentieth, 
Uh, I ended up ending it short because one of the players was, you know, going to have a baby. <laughs> and, yeah. Once you have a child, uh, he already had a couple of kids, but they were like, you know, 15 or something. And once you have that brand newborn, well, you're not playing for a couple of years. So why like, would well, you have babies? Yeah. Yeah. So I figured this is better to wrap it up here. Um, I, you know, like we were already having a lot of problems meeting on a consistent schedule at that point. Yeah. <sighs> man, you have no idea, man. But uh, it's just, I've been so busy for the April as well. It's just been, it's been hard trying to get things together. Yeah. Yeah, I get, I get it. Scheduling can be a bitch, but playing to a high level campaign, I I really, really enjoy that. Uh, it's, you know, it takes, it gives you a time to really learn a character. Uh, you know, like I, if you ask me anything about my LARP character, I probably have an answer because I have years of playing that character. Mm -hmm. uh, and, my, you know, at the LARP, you play once a month or something like that. Uh, whereas with tabletop games, it could be once a week. It could be every two weeks. You're getting a lot more game sessions in. So a two year campaign is more like a four, you know, four years of a LARP uh, in the amount of time played, at least. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. It, it just gives you a lot of time to really invest in that character, really get to know that character. And this is assuming that the character doesn't die. But I, I still I, I right now, lately, I'm just really sort of on the idea of let's let's give characters retirement goals, you know, give them a way out if that goal is met. You know, uh, think, think of it like Frodo. Frodo had an epic quest and his goal was to get that ring into Mount Doom. But yeah, if it's, it's never if it's, to get back home, but if it's a standard D and D campaign, he's going to throw that ring into Mount Doom, and then he's just going to go out and start killing orcs and you know, continuing the adventuring life because <laughs> that's what happens. I still find it amazing that Sam killed Sh Shalob, Shalob, a spider. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just a big ass spider. It's not just a big ass spider. <laughs> just a big ass spider. Never mind it's... that it's you know, more than that, but. <laughs> It's it's much more than just more than that. <laughs> it took one little tiny dagger stab to take out the spider. I mean, hey, Gandalf just fell off a cliff. Oh, same thing. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, he he died. He, he did. Got, he got yeah. better. Yeah, uh, Shal <laughs> look, Shal Shalab probably came back. That's that's what happens with those deity deific beings. No, she didn't. I don't. Eh, they probably never wrote about it, but you know, it's it's not like <sighs> Tolkien didn't really write that many books. I, I'm sure if it kept going, it, it would have got silly. <laughs> Be like Shalab has come back for the third time. <laughs> Shalab 3D. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> like Jaws. <laughs> yeah, Shal what yeah. I was thinking. <laughs> that's what man. That's what we need. We need we need a giant spider movie. No, okay. we don't. The, yeah. the last one was fine. We don't need another one. <laughs> we all go see Eight Legged Freaks if you want to see a giant spider movie. We don't need any more. Yeah, of but that was about a lot of them. I'm talking about just one. No, that yeah. was that was that one was good enough that it it solidified my fear for spiders again for the rest of my life. I mean, if you're watching movies about sharks and they keep making them, they, you know, they need to. We need a franchise of a spider. <laughs> I just want to watch Transmutors in peace. <laughs> so what is uh, so what is a so what is a good retirement option for for a hero I, other than going to a bar because that's terrible. Oh, you mean how, what do you do after you retire? Yeah. Well, that I think that kind of depends on the retirement goals. So the the vast majority of people who would retire from adventuring are wealthy, very very wealthy. Um. Uh, we when we wrapped up our pirate game pirate campaign, I think we were level twelve or thirteen when that one wrapped up. I'd forgot about that, um, but we played that one a couple of years too. Uh, every all the characters sort of went off and did their own thing. A couple of them continued on with their ships. My character, while I technically retired, uh, ended up getting pulled back into it recently. But like, I just bought a curio shop. <laughs> like you uh, bought a business a store yeah. 
you know, and, and it sounds simple and mundane, but when every single day of your life to that point is your life being threatened and things trying to eat you and kill you, just, just hanging out at a store, it, it seems like a good way to live. I don't want to die. Uh, but then, then, you know, there's also other ones where you end up at a retirement because you become a lord or a king. And at that point, you have servants and peasants and lands and everything else to look over. And then you start hiring adventurers, thus becoming an NPC for the next campaign. Yeah, I, I, I've never done that. Um, it's something that I, I just... I guess because I don't have my own campaign world and I play mostly the books, it's just like it's never gotten to that point mm -hmm. where that is a thing that would be necessarily needed. Um, but I have taken NPCs from or PCs from campaigns and written them as characters in that story for publication. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, all of my previous characters for the most part are NPCs in my world. Uh, my, the other co-DM, Johnny, he, he does the exact same thing. And yeah. that, like that, that's a very common thing to do because especially if you're building your own world, you have these characters who have been through stuff. And if you continue progressing in the timeline forward, while those characters are still there, why not just build off of what they've done? You see, I'd like, I'd, I'd like to become the villain, I think. That is another acceptable retirement. Uh, we, we, our buddy Muffin kind of had that happen with his character. Yeah. So we played a, you know, the, the, the 30th level game. We all became deities and he became the god, of, basically the god of tyranny. Um, he, he started off as a paladin, but, you know, just how shit goes, um, you know, law and order is all that matters. <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, he became a little bit tyrannical with it. No, yeah, I, I definitely like that. I'm like, I, I definitely like even for like my LARP characters, like, I, like that would be the approachable goal. I, th I would think, you know, yeah, and you know, not to, to to say too much, but there are PCs who've retired and you know become key staples of the lore for the game. Like that's that for me is like the highest honor you could achieve for a PC where like you, your character retires and everybody wants it to stay around. So it just becomes part of the lore. And that, like one I can kind of speak to is napkin uh, from oh, our yeah. LARP, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the orc warrior that everyone seems to remember and still talks about fondly, uh, you know, still running around in, in the afterlife, just kicking ass and chewing bubble gum and taking names, you know? So like, that's like, that's, that's kind of like a good retirement for me, but also too, like sometimes though you don't have to retire or your retirement is just continuing to fight on forever. Like just think of like Kung Fu or like the judge dread universe or like, you know, when the judge retires, they're basically sent yeah, out to the wasteland out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with a shotgun and like four days of supplies and like good retirement asshole. And that, as yeah, far as you make it is as far as you make it. Like that's a good retirement for a PC, especially a fight, fighter kind. That, I mean, that's, yeah, the setting has to work with that, but that's that's a good way to do it. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'll, you know, just thinking realistically, like military people who have a career in, in the military after retirement, they tend to still work with the military. Yeah, you know, there, there's no a lot of people never really and truly retire, um, like retire. I, I think we as a society just have a weird notion of what retirement is. Everybody thinks, oh, you just do nothing all day after retiring. And yeah, I that's a crazy old lady. Yeah. And, and for some people, that's really all they do. They sit around and watch TV or do literally nothing after retiring. And those people don't tend to live very long after retirement. Um, yeah. Like once you stop moving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to, you have to keep going. So even when you stop retiring, you still have to have things that drive you as a, as a person. Um, not, not, you know, I'm not trying to get preachy, but just kind of bringing this into, you know, table topping, like my, you know, 
while my character did retire from adventuring and the the life of you know, being threatened all the time and you know potential death around the corner, he he still opened up a shop, still had a business, was still yeah. working and doing things. Yeah, and that's great. Have your little shop. Yeah, the and orcs will never stop coming. And then sometimes, like I said, you become lords and, well, you have to hire adventurers to go deal with all the orc incursions or whatever other bullshit. And, and then you get tied into all the politics of things and try to not start a war with your neighbors. I think I think going out like Fresh Cut Grass did is, is the best option, though. I that, think, yeah, yeah, going out, exploiting, killing the big bad end, ga- end guy, making everybody cry a little bit. That's. That's a perfect ending. Yeah, and that that's not that's not retirement in the way we're talking about it. That is that's the, that's that, retirement. That's the ending of a character. And you know, I, I am all for the way they did it. Um because Matt Mercer, he ignored the entirety of the rules in the process of how he let Sam's character go out. And that's okay. Yeah, if that is if that's what would happen at your table, run with it um mm-hmm. you you as the game master and the players sort of have uh, you have your freedom to do that kind of stuff mm-hmm. um i know in like in my game i probably would not have allowed it to go down the exact way uh so just the the exact way that he did it is sam basically cast uh was it spiritual bolt or whatever the first guiding level bolt. guiding bolt thank you cast guiding bolt on himself to cause himself to blow up uh i probably would have said you, you know oh you're a warforged you could just do it you don't have to have guided you don't have to cast shit you can just overload your core to end yourself uh, <laughs> overload your core and yourself well yeah that's that's probably how i would have ruled it as a game master um, if another person you know, wanted to blow themselves up to take out the bad guy, I'd be like, well, you're a dwarf. I hope you have some explosives. <laughs> <laughs> like you need something. <laughs> so so it, it just to go there's a little really quick aside to that. Um, uh, this weekend at the LARP, which you skipped, by the way. You bastard. Yeah, I told you. Um, I, I told everybody I wouldn't be there in April. Yeah, I gotta watch MMA. Um, yeah, and I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they just recently added in like artificing and explosives into the game. It's oh, like role playing no. skills into the LARP. Oh, okay. So, role playing skills. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's been coming up a lot. So, like, I had a bunch, I was running a field battle at the, on Saturday, uh, uh, Sunday, and uh, there's like a little, like a catapult launching things in the town during the, the giant battle. Sure. And players had snuck over to the catapults and are like, okay, we want to blow it up. I have siege engineering and explosives and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, you don't have to worry about that. The old man lights a fuse on a barrel that has a right arrow, a right arrow and a down arrow on it. You don't know why. <laughs> and everything explodes. So I kind of oh. took it from him. But also made that nice reference to Hell Divers, just to make yes. sure everyone had a good time. I don't yes. think they actually understood it because they were just like, "Huh? Why are that's on the barrel?" <laughs> yeah, but that's yeah. such a fun, such a fun game. Uh, I would have, you know, when, when the person says, "I've got explosives," I, I would have asked to see that card. Like, you, you better have, you know. If you're playing D and D and you tell me you have explosives, you damn well better have it on your character sheet. I, I probably because I am on plot this year, I should be asking to see people's tags. But I'm getting some weird ones that, like, I just I I believe you. I believe that no, you no, no. went out and got that tag. I don't need to see it. I don't want to see it. No, if the person if the person says that he has siege engineering, I'm gonna just be like, cool, got it. But if he says he has explosives, <laughs> like that means you're literally carrying them around. Mm-hmm. I need to see a tag for that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's no it's no different than people who um, who kind of go overboard in in D and D, make Molotov cocktails and like the leather bag with the. With the with the crushed up glass shards in it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, 
you 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 are that person that will carry that around. All right, let's just move on from yeah. this craziness. See, you, see, you know how I handled that with my my personal campaign? Explosives didn't exist. Like I yeah. actually I was running a true medieval campaign. So there were no explosives other than magic. They had explosives in medieval times. Uh the Chinese did. The Europeans didn't. They had stuff. No. No, they hadn't they, they hadn't They didn't they, have gunpowder, but they had stuff that exploded. I mean sure, you uh like uh napalm or or you know Greek fire, sure. But that doesn't yeah. really explode so much as just spread. Kills everybody. All the same. Well, well, it kills whoever it lands on and catches them on fire. Oh, I got him on fire. Yep. Uh, but anyway, uh, so our friend Muffin got a fantastic magic item this weekend in, in, in our new campaign. Oh? Yes. He was able to purchase a magical chamber pot. And it's and what it does is it cleans itself anytime you use it. And it also, you know, whatever you leave in it goes into effectively a, a bag of holding type thing, like a, a portal. Uh, there were two versions of it. And initially we didn't realize this, but we, we managed to figure it out before he paid for the item. But the, uh, there's one where it's, more, it's pretty much just like a bag of holding, which is what he ended up getting. And mm-hmm. then there's another one that is a... a it's meant for families um, mm-hmm. and they're all linked together. So you buy one chamber pot and it's effectively linked to like three other chamber pots or seven other chamber pots. And it has more or less infinite quantity of how much it can hold. Okay. But it, you don't want to use that one as like a, a, a chamber pot of storage because literally anybody could just reach into the chamber pot and steal whatever you put in there. But you know, he ended up getting just the singular chamber pot and he paid like 40 gold for it or something to get a bag of holding. But it, but it's a chamber pot, so it's large and he has to carry it around on his back. So now he's a goblin with a chamber pot on his back. That's just an ember hauler and he explodes when he's tapped. <laughs> well, what he doesn't realize is at some point, one of us is going to take a shit in that thing. Because it's a chamber pot. <laughs> it gets real cold in the winter outside. <laughs> so I hope he doesn't keep anything important in there. I mean, uh, I would assume when things go into a bag of holding or extra dimensional space, they're not like. Touching. I mean, they're in a pocket pocket dimension that's uh, a certain circumference, basically. They don't each get their own little pocket dimension. Yeah, but it's like floating around in a void. It's not like they're bouncing off each other. Well, okay. So say I'm just going to make up numbers. Say it's a you know chamber pot of holding. It, it it's two by two on the interior. Mm-hmm. You know, it's two feet by two feet. That whatever could fit within two feet by two feet is what that thing could hold. Yeah, but are we talking like Resident Evil Four style storage? Are we talking you know, like Diablo style? Are we talking like? Well, no. Okay, so chamber pot weighs ten pounds. Right. And you you have, you have a two by two square area inside of that chamber pot. Right. A magical portal. So I take a I take four gems. I set them in there. I take a scroll. I set it in there. Those scrolls and that scroll and gems are all in that four by four area bouncing around or they probably don't bounce around since that area technically doesn't move. Um, but they are wherever they were set within there. So right. then if so then if I take a dump in <laughs> inside there, wherever it lands is where it lands. Yeah, but that's 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 not how the extra dimensional space works of, of a bag of holding. Why isn't it? Okay, so it does take up space, okay? But it's not like things are stacking on top of each other and touching each other. Because you just reach into the bag and like you pull out what you're thinking is in there, do you pull out? Okay, so like I say, you have a bunch of swords and you stick them into the bag. Okay, you reach your hand into the bag. Okay, there's nothing there until like you remember, oh, I have a sword there. And yeah, then you grab the sword. The, 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 the internal component of the bag is just a bag. 
but it has access to a pocket dimension. That pocket dimension, according to the 5e bag of holding, uh, let's see, bag and hold, they, yes, it, it can hold up to 500 pounds, not exceeding a volume of 64 cubic feet. So you have 64 cubic feet of, right, but of you're, pocket you're, you're, dimension you're working with. Right. But you're thinking of like normal, like it becomes a pile of stuff. Again, things are touching and stacked on top of each other, but that's not yeah, how it works. They, they are within they that 64 cubic they feet. Never, yes, they're in that the thing, but they don't touch. Why Their don't atoms they? and molecules don't align or come close at all. They're, he's only going to reach in and grab shit if he reaches in and gra- to grab shit. Otherwise, he's only going to grab the stuff that he knows is in there. Uh... You don't, it's not like Legend of Zelda, like the cartoon where like they pull out their handful of stuff and they're like, okay, here's a tiny little bow. Oh, I pick up the bow and it becomes larger in my hand, you know? So this no, is, you, you this... reach in and you think Mary Poppins, oh, I want my lamp. I got my lamp. I'm pulling the lamp out. Yeah. So, okay, so if, if you could... shove in <laughs> an atom bomb into Mary Poppins bag, she can reach around and there's like, oh, this is full. I wonder why. But until she realizes that there's an atom bomb in there and it pulls out the atom bomb, it's not going to. OK, no, 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 no. OK, hold on. I, I see where you're going with this. I don't agree with you. All right. So you have 64 cubic feet to work with. And mm-hmm. I put I put four gems in there. OK, uh, I then pour s- some water in there. All right. Because it could technically hold anything. That water is still in that same space that those gems are in now. When I think of a gem to pull out, I'm going to get that gem and whatever water has splashed on that gem. No. Like, yeah, it, not at there's, all. There, there's nothing in those rules that say that it does not touch. And nothing in the rules that say it does touch. Yeah, that's fair. So it could be either way. I, I know our DM well enough to know what's going to happen. <laughs> so the only, only way he could figure out that there's shit in there would be if he turned it inside out, like you can with a bag of holding, and just empty. Oh, yeah, yeah. That. That's the only way you can get items out of a bag of holding that you don't know that are in there. Yeah, yeah. But th- once again, this is a little different. It is, however, a chamber pot, so you can't, yeah, you turn, can't, that, you, you yeah. can't turn that inside out. No, you have to flip so, it upside down. Yeah, that you'd have to flip it over, uh, I would assume, to get everything out of it. But it's not that these things aren't touching each other. There's nothing that says they don't. There's nothing that says they do. Like this is a this is another situation of the game master would have to make a ruling. Uh, once again, I, I do I, I knew our yeah I know our game master. I know he's <laughs> going to rule that everything's covered in poop if it happens. But of course, yeah, because it's funnier that way. <laughs> everything's covered in poop. I love poop. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, bag bag of holding. You know, it's if you really want to get super technical with it, there's not a proper answer to this scenario. Yeah, the, for me, the stuff doesn't touch. It it all exists separately in that bag until you otherwise mess with it and, and it would be turning it upside down. It would be the only way to get it out. Um, yeah. It's like Kirby's stomach would be another good example. Everything's just floating around in, like, space. <laughs> I mean, it is, it, it, is, it, it is technically floating around in that 64 cubic feet of space. Kinda, yeah. Uh, but like, it's not yeah. touching. I think, it's yeah, because it, yeah. So it it actually does it store them in the astral plane? That would be weird. No, I don't think it does. Doesn't? No. Uh, no, no. I, I don't think it, if if it's destroyed, it opens up a gate basically to the astral plane. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I guess it's a private pocket dimension. They don't they don't explain enough in 5e about how pocket dimensions work. Why um, would they? Well, it was very it's, it's, it's not like you need rules to play a game. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, you don't need much in the way of rules to play a uh, role-playing game anyway. But 5e is very rules-heavy, so you kind of need rules for damn near everything. Yeah, that's uh, the that's the unfortunate part is that, I mean, it's not unfortunate, but just that there are so many different things that can happen and DMs rules. You, you got to figure it out. You as yeah. a DM always have to know how you want to rule things, you know? 
Yeah. If you don't, you're going to end up with the situation that we were just in arguing about whether or not poop touches things in a bag yeah. of holding. So if, if I was game mastering and somebody tried to poop into somebody else's chamber pot of holding, everything would be covered in poop. That would be my ruling. Uh, I would and, argue and, against that. I, I would have shut you down a very fucking quickly because I do not argue about my rulings. Um, it's my ruling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you, if, you know, if I'm, if I'm going very counterintuitively against a rule, you know, say, say the dragon breathes on you with fire and you have fire resistance. And I tell you, you take full damage like that. I, I could see arguing that, uh, but this one, it, it's, it's silly. It doesn't really matter. It matters to me. Damn it. It matters to me. It's still real to me. Damn it. So anyway, uh, let's let's talk briefly about Dagger Heart. Uh, and mind you, I don't know a whole hell of a lot about it, but I was watching Bob the World Builder do his Dagger Heart review because uh-huh. appara- apparently there is an open beta playtest that he is a part of. Yes, and, there's currently one ongoing. Yeah, and I guess there was no NDA for it, so he's able to talk about it. Uh, wasn't really clear on that in his video. Uh, I don't know if there were like there was an NDA, but um, I don't think that I, I, I think they're letting people talk about it. I think it's like the um, MCDM thing where just they want everyone's input. So, yeah, and I would imagine that that is the case. Um, I mean, they're trying their best not to fuck it up like fucking the OGL, you know, and yeah, have everything just be. Oh, we're going to monetize everything in DLC or tabletop game. Yeah, yeah. Try, tell me about it. Um, no, I, I like I like what they're doing with Daggerheart. I don't know that I would play it or run it, but I, there's definitely things in it that I really do like. Uh, and I obviously the details are still pretty slim. But what you, what you were talking earlier about, um, it wasn't stamina, but it was a uh, stress. They, huh? Yeah, there's a stress rating and a fear rating. Those I kind of like because you're going to have your hit points, but at the same time, you're also uh, fear is given to the DM so that he can use it to do things. And stress is it's literally stress that I would imagine creates complications for the players. Um, but you have methods to burn off the stress. Yeah. I mean, it, it, there, there are some rules for like in like that for core five E, but it's just, Unless it, it kind of goes back to the things that I've said a lot of times before, it's like you can have really cool, interesting mechanics, but unless you are tracking it and using it consistently, mm-hmm. it's just an extra mechanic that doesn't matter. Okay? Yeah, it has to be hardcore part right. of the system. Like here's here's just a really quick example. I said in my rules in my session zero for my current Waterdeep campaign that I run on Saturdays on Twitch. Watch us starting in May um, that if they roll a crit, they could roll the D20 again. And if it's a crit again, it's just straight max damage. OK, 100% so it's, full so it's damage, all, a little bit like third edition confirming criticals. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, I wanted I wanted to see, you know, I wanted to give the players the player only thing, the ability just to do an obscene amount of damage if they rolled a double crit. Yeah, I have yet to remember to remind my players to do that, <laughs> nor have they remembered to do it themselves. Which makes it a useless thing. Yes. Well, now, well, if I, they come, I, actually, it, I like the idea, but it, yeah, yeah, if they come back to me and go, "Oh, I, I, I rolled a crit, I'm going to roll again," I'll be like, "Yep, you could do that," because I always forget. You do know? you get? Do you get to do that? No. Okay. Absolutely just not. I would role. not just players. So I'm not. I'm not a dick DM. I, I'm harsh. I'm not a dick. That's the difference. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Some sometimes the players should get things the DM does not. Right. Because the DM already has access to literally everything. So. Right. Yeah. So I wanted to give them a, a bigger attack, you know, and and let them have fun with it. And yeah, it, it, it was in the session zero rules. It's still on on the D and D Beyond sheet now. Um. I'm assuming they read it. It's in there, but they have yet to remember to do it. And I have yet to remember to do it. And because it's not a core rule. 
Right. And because it's not a core rule, people forget. Yeah, so um, back on the topic of the stress and the fear, uh, uh, I love the idea that there are things like that in Daggerheart. Mm -hmm. uh, because hit points, everybody knows hit points, everybody knows health. It's just a simple tracking mechanism to see how long you can stay in a fight. Yeah. Um, but if you add a mechanic for tracking stamina and add a mechanic for stress and add a mechanic for you know, fear, you need to make them very simple. You need to make them easy, easy, easy to utilize. Yeah. But it adds more flavor and much, much more strategy to a combat. Uh, because you're having to also manage these things. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's kind of like the, the issue that I ran into. It's just like, I never remembered to do, to do those things unless it's something that's just always there for me to remember to do, you know, it, like yeah. madness for something is like the, it's probably the only thing that I, remember to do because it's a very spur of the moment thing you know yeah oh you just saw something fucking crazy you're about to go mad because you saw something crazy yeah and they don't even they, while they do mention it in 5e it's not utilized i think in any setting uh, yeah not that it, yeah it's not that it's not utilized it's just that it's just not it's not brought up at all i think maybe a little in um strahd but even in that, it's yeah. just like it's not a reoccurring thing. It's a, it's an optional thing in in the rulebook. Sorry, the Dungeon Master's Guide, like many other things are, like the cleave mechanic. Right. You, you would know? think you would think that. So so Ravenloft, uh, I can't say for second edition because I'm not sure, but I absolutely know for third edition that it utilized uh, like madness or fear. Uh, I'm pretty sure I, I know it used madness. Yeah. So having something like that like that should have been written in as a rule for the fifth edition Ravenloft game yeah you know, the the campaign module that they created there's no yeah. reason it shouldn't have been used in that yeah they just sort of got lazy and like uh, it's an optional rule and but no no you were try like with Ravenloft you are trying to to get a certain feel from that setting it's not Forgotten Realms. It's not just your standard fare uh, of medieval adventure. No, it is a horror setting campaign. So you yeah. need to have that horror aspect to it. Uh, aside from just death, you have to worry about things like madness because you're going to see some crazy shit. Uh, that outhouse I mean, is a purple worm. Yeah. I mean, I, I only got to play three, maybe four game sessions of it. And in that time period, I'm fairly sure I ate another person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dude eating dudes. So I never could, I couldn't verify, but I'm fairly sure that happened. Yeah. I, mean, it, 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 you, I think as a DM, you also develop, you know, interesting quirks that add spice. Like I, I feel that I can ad lib and. Add add a uh, ad hoc mechanic or an ad hoc twist to an encounter to make it more enjoyable and entertaining, and I think a lot of people have trouble or have problems with that. Mm -hmm. But you know, I find myself able to do that. So like, I can you know, bring in madness as as a key random component and have it work well. Um, some people need that rigid structure though to have everything in there, and I understand. You know, I if the if cleave and madness and all that stuff was, was, was hard coded into the rule book, I think by view would be more interesting, a little more oh, complicated, yeah. but, but definitely more interesting. Like, like cleave, for example, is a good one too. It's a variant rule where like you hit somebody and all damage that carries over from an, if that's the final blow carries over onto the next person. That sounds like fourth edition. No, it's variant rule in five E. Yeah, I'm just saying. It's, no it one ever like, uses it. You yeah, know? Cle cleave was different in third. Cleave was if you killed something, you could attack something next to it. So, yeah, yeah, and, and effectively, you know, it's doing the same thing, just works differently. Yeah. So I just it's 
yeah, like it'd be uh, fun if it stayed. I, I really wish a lot of those variant rules were utilized more often, or were honestly, I think they should have just been part of the damn game uh, as actual rules. Um, yeah, but, you know, they with five e we've talked about it a lot, where they've tried to streamline it so much that it's it's flavorless and kind of boring. Um, but at, but at the same time too, it's like well. Does everyone remember to do all these things at the same time? And like, I, well, I, 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 maybe because I never played three point five, I don't know if that's an issue. I you mean, know, sure, if everyone sure. remembered everything, but it, I like said so the the few games that I played and watching people play Pathfinder, it just looks exhausting to play. You uh, know, I rather I'd rather play it like, um, the the crew that that just did that one Kickstarter with Crooked Moon. Like yeah. I've been, I've been watching some of them, how they do their narrative style D and D play with a five E background, and like that just seems to work so much better than having you know a set of rules to you live or die by, and yeah, they got their skills and abilities, but it's like it's just more fun to ad lib these crazy things that are happening um, all the time. Yeah, it's so weird. I. I, I I'm very much a, a game master at odds a lot of the time with myself because I love systems and I've talked about it before. Mm-hmm. You know, I really like complex systems for gaming. Um, I understand they're much more difficult to run. And if your players are not super invested, probably not going to work out as well. That being said, I am also very, very happy to run a stupidly simple system. But if it comes to a long-term campaign, I'm probably going to want to run something that's more complex. Uh, you know, something that's more complex with more rules usually, usually gives players more options for building their characters. Uh, so it's less on the game master to hand out rewards to build awesome characters and more in the hands of the players to just build their own characters. Yeah. And I, I, I get that. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a weird balance between the thing. Like I sit there and I've created and crafted many a different items and stuff like that. But sometimes it's just like fun to say, oh, I just pull this out of my hat and do this thing and just never bring it up again too. Yeah, yeah, it happens. Happens all the damn time. Like I think the greatest item I ever created was something was never really even used by the players and was more of a role play thing like it was the uh the the mirror of fashion uh where they just look into it and it basically cracks jokes at them and tells them how horribly they're dressed and tells them what would be fashionable to wear says the crew to make the chamber pot of just for poop well i did not create the chamber pot uh, uh the the magical chamber pot that was another guy in my play group <laughs> sure I'm, you can pass the blame all you want jay oh i, I know well, yeah. Let me let me say I'm I'm sadly disappointed that I didn't do it first. Because that you is need absolutely. Fertilize your lawn. I got the poop for you. Yeah, it's absolutely. Yeah, see, yeah, look at that. Make fertilizer. Already finding ways to make money to pay you know, pay that thing <laughs> off. I got shit for days. <laughs> you just take it out to a cow farm. Let them poop into it. See, see, that's what you should do. You should take it to a cow farm, fill it full of cow shit, and then when the DM, without him knowing, and then when the DM goes, "Hey, uh, you can't fit that in there. It's full," and he reaches in there, he's like, "I don't know why. I, I I'm pulling. I want. I want to. I want to pull it out." It's like you. You don't know what it, what's in there to pull out. All right, I'm just gonna turn it over and dump it all out. And he dumps it all out, and just big Pilot. long turd <laughs> comes out. Just, just dry, dry cow poop everywhere. It's like, oh god! I just start referring Amy to him for as some reason, and just start referring to him as a gong farmer. <laughs> See that that's that's how it should go. Yeah, there you go. I'll, I'll get creative with it. Why is it full of rabbit pellets? <laughs> Where'd you find that many you, rabbits? You wanted to, you wanted to make sure that you got that that two foot by two foot by two foot cube full, so you found a bunch of wombats and stacked it in there <laughs> perfectly. Uh, the only problem with that is he'd pull out a dead wombat because there's no air in there. No, no, you had the wombat poop into the thing, so it all 
I, 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 from from my perspective, it does arrange itself to the most optimum space configuration. Yeah. Okay. You know? uh, so, um, so, so he can put his stuff in there, and I just need to put enough poop in there that it fills the bag. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And there then once go. it's full, he doesn't know. So what you do, and it cleans. And when it's, so every <laughs> night when he's asleep, I'm gonna go poop in it. Sooner yeah. or later, it's going to fill up, and he'll never know. So, what kind of character are you running? Uh, I'm playing a wizard, just a human wizard. wizard. Human yeah. wizard? So your average poop is going to be like, what, two pounds of shit? Yeah, probably. probably Take it up by like, well, we're not talking about my, my legendary poops. <laughs> we're talking about a normal person's. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so. giving birth to, to nine-pound babies here. <laughs> so, we're talking like, you know, two pounds <laughs> taken up uh, three inches by... Oh, okay, yeah, it might might take me six months to fill up a sixty-four yeah. cubic Slowly feet over the or campaign. whatever. Yeah. He reaches yeah. in for that final weapon, or just to start this for safekeeping, and like, nope, won't fit. It's full. <laughs> what shitter's full? What do you mean shitter's full? You heard me. Yep, shitting bricks. Sorry, shitting rocks. <laughs> Uh, and this is why we have the best podcast on the air because we literally spent 15 minutes of an hour long podcast talking about pooping into a bag of holding. <laughs> yes, that's why they're tuning in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. That's definitely it. All right. Uh, well, you got anything uh, left to wrap it up here with? Oh, what? We reached the end of the hour already? Uh, yeah, we're really close. Like maybe wow. five, maybe five minutes. I think we're at like fifty-five minutes or something. Let's see. Yeah, that went by quick. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, well, we had a lot to talk about. Yeah, we, we. And here we were thinking we didn't have any topics. <laughs> I had what? I I had two topics, and we managed to get three topics out of it. So and we still haven't t- discussed the elder brain dragon uh, Tyrask yet. Shit. <laughs> maybe next week on the Grumpy Dungeon Master Podcast. <laughs>